Hi, my name is Michael. Uh, welcome to Silver Game. Today we're going to be going over how to play the Pokemon Tabletop United Tabletop game. Uh, specifically, we're going to be going over character creation. Uh, so stick around. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so first things first, we're going to jump into character concept. Okay, that's found on page 12 of the manual. So essentially what they want you to do before doing all the math and everything else involved in this, they want you to come up with some idea of what you're trying to make, right? So when you do that, you're going to want to have a general idea of what you want, uh, you know, what their personality traits are like, how they grew up, what, they, what kind of activities they wound up participating in, because that's going to wind up building the baseline for all the, to the mathematical decisions we're going to have to make later. Note that, you know, this game is very math intensive, so once we ever, well, once we get down to everything, uh, you don't need a master's degree in physics in order to do all the math. Uh, just a general understanding of how algebra works. So we've worked on the background. We've decided that, or sorry, we've, we've worked on the character concept. We've decided that, you know, we're going to do a junior Pokemon scientist trying to discover the secret to the origin of Pokemon, right? So we're going to base all of our decisions from this point off of there. Let's just say for, a, you know, an example, history. So next step we're going to look at is the background, okay? Now your background directly relates to your skills, which are found on page 33. I'll go ahead and show those to you real quick. So the way that skills work, right? So we've got three categories. We've got body skills, mind skills, and spirit skills. And then each of those have 17 skills underneath them. Well, I wouldn't say each of them. All of them together have 17 skills underneath them that define your training as a trainer. You know your, your kind of skills as a trainer uh, now body skills are skills that have to do with physicality mind skills or you know using big brain stuff and then spirit skills have to do more with personality than anything else so we're gonna look at the body skills we've got acrobatics athletics combat intimidate stealth and survival your mind skills are general ed medicine education uh, occult education Pokemon education tech education guile and perception and then spirit skills are charm command focus and intuition so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the ranks for these before we move forward into anything else. So you have to understand that each skill has a rank assigned to it, and those ranks can go anywhere from 1 to 6. So 1 is a pathetic skill, 2 is untrained, 3 is novice, 4 is adept, 5 is expert, 6 is master. And then the dice roll you use whenever you're using that skill is the rank, or it's, it's the number of ranks you have in D6s. So a rank one skill pathetic has a dice roll to check at 1d6 so we're using d6s to check our skills uh, essentially a skill check you know if you don't know what that is i'll go over that you know in another video uh, on how skills are used specifically but for now just understand that's how that works going back to our background right Understand that your background modifies where your skills start at. So essentially, out of your 17 skills, you have all of them. Uh, one of them is going to be at, you know, at level one. One of them is going to wind up being adept. One skill is gonna wind up being novice. And then three skills are gonna wind up being brought down to pathetic. So all of them start at untrained. We'll go back to the ranks real quick. So all of them start at untrained. You're gonna drop three down to pathetic, bring one up to novice, and one up to adept. And that's it. That's all you have to do for your background. Now, understand that when creating your background, uh, skills represent conscious interests and training that your character uses to interact with the world as well as incorporating the trainer's natural talent. So essentially, this is where you start fleshing out your character a little bit. You're like, okay, well, you know, Timmy wants to be a Pokemon scientist, so when looking at the skills, you know, he's definitely going to have something in the education section, something in the mind skills up at ADEPT, because that's what he's training to do. Whether it's, you know, medicine education, uh, Pokemon scientists trying to discover the secrets of the origin of Pokemon might have more at ADEPT in the Pokemon education section, right? Uh, someone who was trying to study the origin of ghost types might be you know, educated in occult education. 
uh, someone who wants to further Pokemon technology, Pokeballs, uh, Pokemon theme parks, stuff like that might have a technology education set up as adept. And aside from that, you can set up other things as, you know, one of them is a novice skill and then three of them is pathetic. So what might somebody who is, you know, in, in introspective somebody who's very internalized in their brain what might they not be good at might not be good at charm might not be good at focusing on you know what they're doing at the time um big brain tiny attention span right so we're going with that idea okay so we've set up your background the next thing we're going to wind up doing is choosing edges as i described here boom choose edges so edges and features are the most complicated portion of character creation the first thing we're going to do is choose edges out of those two. Step three, right? So you start with four train, four edges to distribute as you see fit. Uh, so edges represent a character's training and development in broad fields covered by the skills, right? The most basic type of edge is a skill edge, which simply raises the rank of their skills by one. Now, keep in mind, okay? Yes, there is a section called skill edges, which can modify the ranks in skills, but there are also edges that fall under skills. So, for example, if we go back down to the skills section, over in 33, and we go down to acrobatics, let's just say, there are edges underneath acrobatics that aren't in the skill edges section. So you really have to decide, you know, in the edges, do I really want to be good at a specific skill, or am I just trying to, you know, is a specific use of a skill, or am I just trying to level that skill in general? Uh, and then they also have general edges that you can choose as well. Uh, so as far as edges are concerned, there's five classes, okay? You've got your skill edges on page 52, and then they also fall under the skill pages, so look at those as well. You've got your crafting edges, Pokemon training edges, combat edges, and other edges, which is the general edges section. Now, you're going to pick four of those uh, and note the changes that they make to your character. So the next section we're going to do is features. Uh, features is a little more complicated. It is 138 pages long and it ranges from page 57 to page 195 in the PDF. So they represent exceptional and unique features of the character. Uh, they truly define what a, char a character and what they are good at. So you've got two categories of features. You have so you've got two categories of features. You've got general features and class features. We're going to go back up to this section. So classes are special features that act as gateways to grouping or related features that are strongly tied to a particular concept. So this is like, you know, in traditional RPGs, you've got wizard class, fighter class, rogue class, whatever. Uh, this is very similar to that, but the difference is that you can technically take features from multiple classes uh, without having to pay into multi-classing, right? Uh, so features are what really make a trainer stand out. There are a number of general features available to all trainers in Pokemon Tabletop, but most features are tied to trainer classes. So for example, if we go to... So if we go to page 59, they have the whole list of general features right there. And then immediately following that, you have Pokemon training and order features, uh, and then orders, training features, and trainer classes. And from here, it really gets down to different features that aren't within the class feature section right uh, so you're really going to want to take a look at this list on top of all of this they also have trainer classes so for example if we go to ace trainer underneath ace trainer you'll find a description of the class uh, for example, they aim to be the very best at Pokemon battles, right? This is Ash, to the T, right? Uh, so under Ace Trainer, they have a class feature. You have to have met the prerequisite in order to get the feature. Uh, we'll go over action points and stuff like that in another video explaining how they work, but for now just know that if you drain one AP, you get an extended action, uh, and that action gives you the effect here. But underneath it, you see that you have plenty of sub-features to choose. Now, when selecting features, okay, note that you get one feature regardless of the prerequisites, and it's a training feature. 
then you pick four features to distribute as you see fit. On page 58, there is a page that says this page is important and you should read it. This is true to the T. You need to read this page because this describes exactly how feature tags work and what you need to be doing uh, when you're choosing features with that tag on it. So for example, uh, if we go back to the table of contents, we go to battle styling classes. There, we'll go back to the table of contents. We'll pick commander, right? Underneath that, commander class, okay? Underneath mobilize, it is an orders tag, okay? Uh, then, for example, if we go back to table of contents uh, and we look at general features, okay? Training, orders, training, orders, training, orders, training, orders, 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 um, stratagem. And then you also have features with tags like plus stat, ranked X, branch, orders, weapon. You know, you need to pay attention to all of these and they're gonna to explain to you exactly how they work. So essentially just keep track of all your tags because this is gonna help out in the next section. Okay, so next we're gonna wind up assigning combat stats. So this portion is simple. This is not where the math is. The math is finding in your derived stats, which is the next step, but for now we're just gonna assign combat stats. So you have six combat stats, your HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. Uh, HP determine your hit points, attack, you know, how hard you can hit physically, defense is how hard you can resist physical attacks, stuff like that. Um, now, starting trainers begin with 10 points in HP and five points in each of the rest of their combat stats. You have an additional 10 points to distribute among your combat stats, but you can't put more than five into any single stat. Now, the tags that they use here at the bottom are perfect. Uh, essentially, they explain exactly how tags, especially with the plus stat tag, are applied to your base combat stats. So we're going to roll right along into the finding derived stats section. So here, your derived stats are your action points, hit points, your three evasions, your power, your high jump, long jump, overland movement speed, and swim speed. There are 13 derived stats, OK? Uh, you've got your throwing range, your size, and your weight included in there as well. Uh, descriptions of each and the formulas in order to find out how to do the math uh, to get those values is provided to you here. I'm not going to go over that because I'm not a math teacher, um, but essentially follow this to the T because this is this is where it gets a little math intensive. Uh, if you get confused on how to do formulas, uh, for example, how to do the trainer hit points one, uh, literally look up a video on YouTube that explains how to do PEMDAS, which is the order of operations. Uh, and, you know, they'll help you figure out how to do the math there. Now, as far as step eight, okay, or step seven, basic descriptions, okay? Step seven, step eight, and step nine are where you start working more and more closely with your GM. So, for basic descriptions, you're going to want to work with the other players to figure out a sort of shared history, see if you guys come from the same place. If so, how do you know each other, stuff like that. You know, hair color, eye color, give your character a name, right? Because we're going to, this is the part where we flesh out the, the fun part of the character. Uh, step eight, choosing Pokemon. This is entirely up to your GM. Refer to them whenever you're doing that. Uh, otherwise, just follow the basic directions in here if your GM is unavailable. Step nine, money and items. Again, entirely reliant on your GM. Now, if you have any questions about how any of this works, feel free to leave a comment in below. Um, you know, we'll go ahead and go over all of that. Uh, any questions that you guys have in a later video um, or a later series of videos, honestly, if you have any more questions. But uh, at this point, there shouldn't really be any more questions on how to do this. Uh, the book is mostly self-explanatory. Like I said, the only confusing portion is the you know choosing features and choosing edges portion uh, understand that when you pick features and edges they can affect each other so make sure you're keeping track of exactly what each of those abilities does this is a very math intensive game if you're not into math that's okay have your gm help you with the process along the way they should be familiar and if they're not familiar they're going to get familiar so again thanks for spending time with me uh y'all have a good night Hi there. Welcome to the end of the video. You made it. 
So, I am planning on getting a PTU game set up uh, in order to play with other people online uh, over Discord, maybe even Roll20, depending on if I can get everything to work. If playing in a game like that would be something that you'd be interested in, go ahead and leave me a comment below saying like, hey, I want to play this. I will comment back to you, we'll get in connection with each other, and we'll see if we can't get a game arranged. Uh, the scheduling for it is to be determined, so I'll go ahead and let you guys decide if you want to do that. If you like the video, by the way, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Uh, I'll go ahead and either go more in depth with things that are done in the comments, you know, that are said in the comments, or we'll go ahead and, you know, make other videos relating directly to PTU. I know it's a very confusing system for people that aren't very, like, math savvy, so I'm willing to help you guys out with that. Uh, I tried to make this video as quick as I possibly could. Uh, this way you guys didn't get too bored with all the information. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. Thanks for coming by. Y'all have a good night.